G'day, I'm Patrick from Douglas Fur Design. Welcome to the Router Bits. I want to have a play with this bird's mouth bit today. Uh, it's a specially designed router bit that allows you to create uh, round vessels, like multi-sided timber vessels, like a planter box or a little vase and that sort of thing. Originally, the join was used in uh, creating masts because it allowed you to put multiple pieces of timber joined together in a very strong way. Uh, that probably wasn't done with the router bit though, they would have probably done that by hand. How these bits work is they cut a uh, essentially a 90 degree corner into the edge of the timber and the different bits allow you to set what angle you want that bite to be taken out of. And the reason we do this is so that when you put two of these together, it creates the angle that we have decided upon and you can, in this case, join six of these together to create a circle. The difference with the different bits is they basically just adjust that angle slightly so you can use more or less sides to create a different sided vessel. Notice with this little test piece that I've done that the way that this joins there's a really smooth face there, so the pointy edge of that bit meets up perfectly with the, uh, the edge of my piece of timber that it receives. In order to do that, we need to make sure that the bit that we're cutting out is exactly the same thickness as the piece of stock that we're machining. If it's not the same thickness, what you end up with is a slightly different profile, which still fits together nicely, but you don't have that really nice single sharp edge there. We actually have a protruding corner here. And that can also look really good, it just depends on what you're going for. If you are going to use some thicker stock with this particular bit, you are going to get that corner, it's unavoidable. So if you want a really nice smooth edge, you're going to have to use something that matches the uh, exact dimensions of this particular bit. And the way that we figure that out is the length of these faces on the blade. The top length here is about 17 millimetres, the bottom length here is about 15 millimetres. And so depending on which way we're going to orient these pieces, those are the maximum thicknesses of our timber to get that really nice perfect edge. As I mentioned earlier, the Torcada bird's mouth bits available from TimberCon allow you to do different sided vessels. So the first one, which I'm going to be using today, allows you to do a six sided vessel, or if you use it on the other angle, it also allows you to do a 12 sided vessel. And I'll show you both of those. The other bits that they have allow you to do an eight sided vessel, and then there's a second bit that allows you to do a 16 sided vessel. Uh, this is the only one that allows you to do both a 6 and a 12 uh, and I'll have a play with that now. The first thing I'm going to do is make a 6 sided box. Uh, as I mentioned before the length of our top uh, blade there is about 17 mil so I've machined some stock down to 17 mil just so I can get a really nice smooth edge. We'll lock this into the machine and I'll show you how to get the height and the fence adjustment set just right. It's relatively simple for this operation. So to set our height, all we need to do is to use our stock as a guide, place a straight edge along to the blade, and we want to be able to access as much of this blade as we can. So I'm just gonna lower this down until uh, my straight edge comes in contact with the top edge of that blade and doesn't go over it, otherwise we're not gonna be using all of that blade. So I'm still hitting the blade by about a millimeter there, and that's perfect for the height. I can lock that off. And to set the depth of the fence, all we want to do is make sure that when we're doing this cut, this top edge remains intact, so we're not cutting too far, or not cutting into the timber at all there. That, that edge should remain intact after we've passed it through. The best way I've found to set that is to lock off one side of your fence, place a little square or a straight edge, on your stock, slide it over to the router bit just so it clears that blade by just a hair. This is a really common um, way to set the depth of the fence for a lot of bits I've found. All right, you can lock that in. I've set this up to cut my six sided uh, box. I'm just using pine, so I'm gonna do it in one pass and I haven't set feather boards or anything and it'll be totally fine. 
If you are using a really hard wood, you might want to do this in multiple passes and you might want to use feather boards. You don't have to cut these all into little blocks first. You could do it all as one piece and then chop them down on the, uh, on the miter saw or the drop saw, but I've already cut these, so we'll do that this way. Okay, I've cut my six bits. Now it's just a matter of putting them all together. Uh, I'll just try and do it on the table here for you. Use an elastic band if I can. Maybe I can't. You could also just use masking tape to hold these together. But Okay, so there you can see the really simple explanation of, of what, we've, what we've created. Each one of these pieces only has a cut on one side and then the uh, one side is left at 90 degrees and that fits in perfectly into that bird's mouth. It's a really nice tight fit all around. It'd be really easy to glue up with just masking tape or elastic bands or whatever you want to do. Uh, afterwards, you can go through and, and sand these edges off if you want them a little bit uh, smoother, but all in all, they're pretty sharp. They're um, pretty neat. So from our little six-sided box here, we can actually use the same pieces to make a 12-sided box, although we will need six more of them. Just by flipping them around, I'll show you how. And what we're getting is actually just a much less steep angle between each of these pieces. One of the results of doing this though is you can't avoid having this lip on, on each piece as you go around. You can't have that really nice smooth join like we did with the six sided box just because of the geometry of, of what we're trying to join. Uh, basically if you imagine these being joined at uh, in, exactly in a straight line, both edges would be touching. If we go quite a steep angle, you can create that little bird's mouth, but as you get closer and closer to a straight line, the little bottom side of that bird's mouth just basically disappears. So you, you naturally have to have that corner when you go with a multi-sided vessel, uh, like the 12 that we're trying to create, and that would also apply to the 16-sided uh, bird's mouth bit as well. I wanted to show you a couple other things you can do with these bird's mouth joins. Uh, I've cut two of my uh, panels to be much narrower than the others, just to create a different shape. And so this creates a, essentially, sort of a squashed diamond shape, which is uh, very simple and looks really nice. And basically, as long as you're cutting these, uh, each of these panels in a, in a symmetrical way, as long as you're cutting two of them in the same, same size, you can create lots of different shapes. For instance, you could make these ones really long and create a really long oval. Of course, this is our six-sided bit, but if you used our eight-sided, you could create a variety of squares with soft edges or long rectangles, etc. The other thing I wanted to show you is that all of these joins face the same direction, essentially um, clockwise, and so it has its own sort of circular symmetry, but it doesn't have true symmetry, but you can achieve that. Instead of having one, jaw, one cut on every um, piece and one edge that's left alone, you can actually put two cuts on one piece and then the next piece will have no cuts at all. And uh, I'll just show you what that looks like, I'll cut the pieces now. So I cut my uh, smallest panel with a bird's mouth on both sides now instead of just one, just to show you that you can create a more symmetrical looking uh, box where the joins are, I mean, it's just symmetrical. 
it doesn't have to be a short panel like this, it just happens to be the one that I cut. So that's just a slightly different look. Uh, another really interesting thing that you can do with these joints, of course, is using different coloured timber. Uh, it can create a really beautiful effect to have some, uh, some darker wood like Jarrah and then something lighter like Tassie Oak. I've just used pine here because it's so soft and easy for me to cut. These bits will happily go through harder timbers. You just might need to do a couple of passes so you're not taking off too much timber in one go and overworking the, uh, the machine and it won't give you a nice clean cut. So yeah, fantastic little bit, uh, really versatile, especially with all three of them. You can create so many different uh, shapes of boxes and vases and planters and uh, wherever else your imagination takes you. You can pick up these Torcata bird's mouth bits from Timbercon on their website at timbercon.com.au or in their stores in Perth and in Melbourne.